guest speaker this morning. We have your biz bestie Belle coming on today onto the Freedom Queen channel to talk about growing your business to multi six figures, talk about her story. And if you are growing your business to multi six figures, you want to stay around because it's just going to be incredible. There's nothing like hearing someone's story and then using that in order to grow your business. So I'm very excited to bring on Belle. Let's get her on here. If you are new to my world, put an emoji in the comments. If I know who you are, just say hello. I would love to know uh, that you're here with me if you know who I am. And let's bring on Belle. Let's see if I can bring her on here. There we go. Okay. Hello. Hi, ah, boss mom. Hello. Hi, Audrey. How are you? Well, I'm so excited. <laughs> I know. Oh, I, I haven't seen you in months. And I was like, I was thinking about our live and I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited to see you and, and just get so right? get the chance. No, to I hang feel like out. I haven't talked to you or been on like a call with you and since like the sem October, November, back, back then, way back. Ah. It's been forever. But I'm, I'm so excited that you're here. I'm very, very pumped. So do you want to just introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, and then I'll just ask you a few questions about your business, we'll riff, it'll be very conversational, and then if you're watching this and you're live with us now and you have questions for Belle, feel free to drop them in the chat, but just who are you, what are you, give us so, all the like Belle So like I said, magic. I'm so excited to be here, thank you for having me on. Um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Belle, I am a business mentor for women who are scaling to their first six figures, so I really help you go from that early stage of uncertainty in business, not really knowing what to do, not feeling comfortable showing up in your power and in full self-expression. So that's really where I take you from to feeling confident, stepping into that CEO energy, and obviously making a lot of money. So I have experience scaling multiple kinds of businesses. I started off as a VA back in 2020 after I saw a TikTok. And from there, niched into copywriting. And from there, shifted <laughs> into mentorship. So it has been a journey, but I've learned a lot along the way. And I just love sharing with my clients what I've learned and helping them create their dream businesses too, because I feel like it's pretty insane that in like three years, I was able to create just like a career that I love so much that fits all of my very picky boxes for what I always envisioned myself doing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We love picky, you know, being able to decide what you want. So, okay. That's fascinating. I love the mm -hmm. TikTok that you found a TikTok video and then you were like, okay, I'm going to start this business. But can you tell us like, like, how did you get to where you are today? Like, obviously there's so much detail and that can go so long, but just like, how did you get to where you are today? Walk us through that TikTok and maybe where you were before yeah. to. Okay. Like the full, the full journey. So basically for those of you who don't know this, I'm 20, which I feel like is a lot of people here. I'm meeting a lot of new people I see, which I'm excited about, but I started my business when I was fresh out of college. So I actually graduated from college in the pandemic, May 2020. And like, no was hiring. Oh, wow. Literally nobody was hiring. But also, confession time, guys, I did not want to get a job. Like, I was like, I don't want to work a nine to five. That's always going to figure it out. And, and like, end up doing something that I wanted to do. And then the pandemic hit, and it kind of gave me this, like, break in time where I was like, I can actually think about something that I want to do. So I started exploring how to work online. And I wasn't really sure I thought I was going to start a blog, which was not really bad, um, about interior okay. design, which I have no background in. So I was really going random. All <laughs> I, then, um, I, I kind of was under some pressure because I very luckily had help from family supporting me, but they were kind of like chop chop, you got to start figuring it out, like it's time to cut the cord. So one day, I still hadn't figured it out, by the way. I was just panicking every day, but I was scrolling on TikTok and I saw this TikTok like, hey, you can make $9,000 a month um, in four months as a VA. And it blew my mind. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to do this as my job. And I had no idea that I was going to be like starting a business, a real business, like building a brand, like working with clients. Like I knew I was going to work with clients, but I thought I was going to be like their assistant, right? So that was definitely a learning. And I just started teaching myself self wow. everything honestly I dove right in started learning all the things I was offering like a gazillion different services stuff that I'm not even good at doing or don't even like doing but <laughs> I, I I did start to figure it out of course as everybody always says because it really is that good 
investing in mentorship and getting guidance was when things started to blow up. So at every step of my journey, I was making sure that I had the support I needed, even when it felt like the scariest thing in the world. I just kind of would, again, trust that everything was going to work out. Yeah. And also knowing myself and knowing how I apply myself in programs, I was like, let's do this, let's go. So investing in mentorship, it, investing in mentorship at every level, and then really just going for it, showing up, doing the work, and like being super duper consistent. And right now I have actually entered a period in my business where I've been able to step back a little bit and enjoy life because what I have created for myself with that like daily grind and consistency. So I'm definitely not the person to tell you like, oh, you can work four hours a week and build a, success a successful business. That's not me. But if you do work hard and like just explore what you're interested in and really choose something that you're passionate about and kind of find where you fit, I feel like it can work out for anybody, but it has to come back to like, being committed to it and doing the work. It's not what I thought it was, which was, which was like, Oh, I'll just do this as my job. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I love this story. I'm checking the chat. Tati says, oh my God, Tati. miss you both. I miss you. Tati, I, I miss you. Oh, right. <laughs> it's like a party over here. Um, <laughs> um, relatable. Yeah. Something that you said, Belle, about you were like, I basically was doing things that I wasn't even qualified for. And I remember when I was in New York City in 2020 and I had just quit my job, I would do anything to bring in cash. Like you talking about writing a blog for the, the interior design or a blog on that. I wrote, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I was a, uh, basically like an Ask Amy for a nutrition <laughs> magazine, but I'm not a nutritionist. So this is like, this is what I mean by like, I was, I was willing to do whatever it took. I, I did some fitness coaching. I did help people with meal plans, things like that. So I would go and Google the answer to the question and then respond and be like, but please consult your healthcare doctor. Like, but that is like an entrepreneur at the most. I'm just like, I'm not a nutritionist, but I can, I can do that. I'll find a way. So when you said that, I was like, <laughs> I remember um, different things. So, okay. I'm going to take us down a different route than I had planned. What do you see as the thing or some of the things that really successful people have where they're just like, go in, build the minimum six figure, and then they just start scaling. And then, yeah, let's just start with that. What, yeah. what are the things uh, okay. that you see? I'm so excited to talk about people. this and riff on this with you because I think we really agree here. And I noticed this in your content and your message, but routines and like habits and honestly just having like a really good sense of what's going to be good for you and having the self-awareness to make decisions around the future and not the right now so I know that you've spoken about this but um for me it was like an inner transformation and obviously I could talk to you guys all day about like strategy creating content creating offers launching and like sure that stuff's great information but for me the big thing like successful people that I see is this willingness to like kind of put other things to the side and make the business a priority because I think that I had this real moment where I was like I'm gonna have to change almost some of who I am in a way like the kind of person that I used to be and like shed this version of myself where it's no longer serving me I'm like doing things that don't align with like the, the version of myself that I see in my head that is super successful so I think it's just having the self-awareness to like identify when you are getting in your own way um and what I really see in like the clients who I work with who really thrive is like a willingness to do almost like the inner work and to do like the harder stuff around maybe I'm doing things that aren't serving me maybe like I'm the problem right now um, and having the self-awareness to identify that and then move forward and get support, right? Or move forward and carve out habits and routines that are going to serve you. So like a big thing for me, I live in New York City, guys, huge going out culture here, especially my friend group used to go out every night, get drunk with my friends. We go to different clubs, whatever. I was out until like three or four in the morning. When I started my business, I was like, cannot do this stuff, right? I think you did a post about this, Bridget, that was very similar where it was like, cannot do yeah these things that are going to impact me later down the line. And this also infect, affected me with business decisions where I would find myself like now I'm my own boss. I have, I'm in complete control of my time. How do I stop self-sabotaging? How yeah. do I stop scrolling on TikTok? How do I not take a nap the second I feel tired because I'm like at my house all day, right? So really just how to like hold yeah. that, that 
level of like, this is my job. I'm showing up for my job. And also I'm building something bigger than just selling stuff online. So that's going to take like a little bit of sacrifice, which by the way, guys did not even end up being sacrificed because I like it so much better on the other side. Right. So that's one thing. And then of course, yeah. there's just a willingness to learn to again, show up and do the work to apply the strategy. If you're the kind of person who's like, Oh, it's not going to work. Like I'm not cut out for this. Like it's just not meant for me, but you've only been doing it for like two weeks or you're not willing to like, invest in support and like see get somebody to spot your gaps for you you're gonna have a hard time because this kind of industry like or just the game of entrepreneurship i think is all about being willing to grow and just like put yourself in situations that maybe are scary or maybe are uncomfortable or maybe you don't like in the moment because it means it's going to be better for the future of you and your business and just the longevity so i hope that answers. i kind of went off a little bit yeah no, it's so good. I totally talk about that on my page that in 2021, I did six months sober. And then I was like, Oh, that was amazing. And then I went to Italy. And then we started drinking in Italy. And it was so much fun and all the things. And then I last year did a whole month sober. I mean, no drinking completely sober. And I loved it. And then now I don't I don't drink at all. And so there's so many different levels to it with habits too. I'm, I'm curious if you see this It's like you you go down a rabbit hole of like getting rid of all the shit. It's like, first it was the no alcohol. And now like, I realize I self sabotage in different ways. So what are, what are some of the not challenges that you're going through right now, but recent challenges that you've had maybe end of last year or middle of the year? What were those challenges that you went through that you're kind of like uncovering in your business? Oh boy, I, I love them? this question because I actually like, like a lot of stuff has kind of happened. And it does kind of relate to like what we were just talking about in the sense of sometimes you have to like let go of things that maybe aren't serving you. And my, I, my partner, we lived together and yeah. we recently just kind of went through a period of no contact with some of our family members. That was really difficult affect, affecting us emotionally, wanting to be there for each other and also just consuming a lot of like energetic weight of like, it, it just felt heavy. And then when things mm -hmm. personally difficult yeah. to show up in business and even though I believe so much in consistency and I believe so much in like, you know, it's one thing to feel tired and like want to take a nap instead of like getting on your Instagram live. But it's another thing when you're like tired in your soul and that's going to act like actually your energy yeah. and how you're showing up. So for me, it was just really learning how to like navigate that and almost become like not used to it, but how to work in like life and when I'm feeling that way into my business model because before I had a business model that did require me to be like kind of go 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 like I was very like back to back launches and I was very like um showing up on video and stories and talking about my offers like extensively every day and doing a lot of trainings and that stuff's great but I started to realize like one this isn't sustainable with what's going on personally but also scaling wise it's not going to be sustainable because I started to feel super burnt out I started to resent I had set up my programs, which was yeah. also very like hands on high touch. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it has to be right in the products. We it has to make sense with like, obviously, the price you're selling it for the value that you have, which it didn't for me. So it was kind of a combination of like, navigating, yeah. okay, I have shit going on in my personal life. I also have things in my business that feel like leaky. How am I going to clean this up? And that's really what I worked on with my mentor. Mm -hmm. What, are, what, if you feel comfortable sharing or just some general ones, because I, I love using the term leaky and I know it's very common. People use that term. What are like some actual leaky things that go on in people's businesses yes. that they don't even okay. realize? Are I leaky? see this a lot, especially because I do work with new entrepreneurs. So the biggest thing that comes to mind is like boundaries and you think you have boundaries in place that serve you, but they aren't actually the boundaries that you're choosing or they actually don't make sense for your business. So what I mean by that is I have a lot of clients who come to me and they're like, okay, people are really demanding. They don't want to pay a lot. Like I'm bending over backwards, trying to sign clients, giving people discounts. The clients that I do work with don't respect me. They don't respect what I have in place. Mm -hmm. And I take a look and it's like, they, they have boundaries, so to speak, but they're not being enforced and they're not actually written into their business. The way that I think at a higher level, you start to actually policies in place and systems mm -hmm. in place to prevent certain things from happening. So a perfect example of this is like failed payments, right? Clients who um, send manual contracts. I have a lot of people who come to me and they're still sending, sending manual, right? I, I, I recently,
recently met someone who uh, they said they were manually sending out contracts and, and I was like or payments like invoices and I right? was like what and then they're complaining to me like oh my clients don't pay me on time and I'm like well get them on an automatic payment system get that invoice earning like this is something that you can clean yeah. up so easily and that's a practical fix another thing not really like liking the way that yeah. your programs are set up so I don't know if you would consider that leaky but I definitely do when you have a program and you don't want to like interact with it, right? Like the clients who reach out to you, you feel resistant. So maybe the boundaries around communication aren't there. I think that that's like the overwhelming amount of people who honestly come to me and say, my clients don't respect me in Boxer. They're sending 10 minute long messages. Um, you know, they're messaging me on the weekends and asking me to respond. And it's like, because you don't have a really clear like setup for how you're going to explain yeah. to them this is how I want you to use the container so part of it is boundaries and then the other thing is like practical things around what how are your programs set up are they set up to support your clients in a way where it's going to feel good for you too good example of this for me was shifting to evergreen programs because I felt like it was really difficult for me to sustain a good client experience because I was so drained from my launches right so sometimes it's what you have to put in place and then other times I think it's like boundaries and knowing if something's bothering you in your business, really getting to the root of like, how can I fix this? Cause there's always a solution. Sometimes it's a longer term solution. Like sometimes you have to shift maybe who you're targeting your messaging and go deeper, but other times it can be like a super simple practical tweak. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I first signed on one to one clients and I signed on 12 and I, that's the same time I was traveling through Europe and Italy. And I exhausted myself. It was like 12 one-to-one -one clients a week. I was like, this is freedom. This is not freedom. Like I am on Zoom calls. And so immediately I switched to one to many, which all of those people had signed up for three month programs, which I delivered on, but I started like tweaking it and I started bringing them onto group calls and phased out some of the one-to-ones for those of them that were more into the group. Like, Making those shifts, I love what you said about if you're feeling any resistance around getting on calls or delivering in programs, that is leaky energy. And you don't have to dump it away. You don't have to just get rid of it. Someone recently said, oh, I'm just going to cancel this whole thing, you know, end the program. And I'm like, no, no, because it's not the program's fault. It's your fault. And so no matter what new program or new offer you tried to sell, it's never going to fulfill you because you're not acknowledging what you really desire. So like that was yes, money. No, that was, I, I completely agree with you. I think that it's like, and then this comes back to like the whole thing around showing up, which I know we like touched on before the consistency and like the commitment to that. When you have leaky energy in your business and you don't like your business, it becomes really hard to show up for it because nobody's going to be more excited than you are. And if you're not excited to talk about your offers, like, and maybe even there's like an internal resistance to signing clients, right? Like you think you want to sign clients, but you're actually subconsciously scared because if you bring on more clients, you're going to feel more resistance. You're going to feel more stress because you have leaky energy and no boundaries in your yeah. business, right? So it's kind of like a cycle of boom when you don't clean that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. So I, I love that you brought in about having family issues. Cause I think that's, mm -hmm. we don't see that stuff behind the scenes, right? Like we don't, we don't really know what's going on. So in those moments, let's say someone watching this right now or catching the replay or just drop an emoji in the comments. If you can relate to this in those moments, when you have something going on in your personal life, like what are you doing behind the scenes to make sure that you are nurtured, taking care of yourself, but then also how do you show up for your business. I think that this time. is like one of those things where I just believe so much in doing personal development work, doing inner work, having routines that ground you. So I know for you, movement is huge. Movement is huge for me too. A couple of years ago, I went through like a big weight loss journey and that triggered in me like so much comfort and just like, like I love, like I fell in love with working out because I saw it transform my body and my mind and my mentality about commitment and hard work. So for me, it's about mm -hmm. having those things that I can come back to that ground me, right? Having my routines where I'm like, okay, no matter what's happening in my life, no matter how upset I am right now, I'm going to yeah. wake up, I'm going to do my workout, or I'm going to like listen to my music and get a great start to the day. I'm going to take my time to like go on my walk. I'm going to 
take my time to relax. Like guys, I, I love hard work, but I'm like a big relaxer, low key. I love to relax. I make sure I have time to relax every single day, build it into my schedule. So I make sure that I just have this time for myself. And then sometimes when things are, you know, tough, I treat myself, do things that make me feel good. I love a massage. I love spending time with like friends and just kind of like venting. And I know we were talking before about like, you know, making sure that <clears throat> you're, ha you're, you're taking care of the future version of you. And sometimes the future version of me needs to like have a drink with a friend and like have a fun night out. So it's really just about like what I need yeah. in that moment. And then when I'm able to prioritize myself and just make sure that like, you know, I'm not consumed by like the heavier stuff that's going on. It's not the only thing that I'm thinking about and ruminating about that makes it much lighter for me to come back to my business and serve my clients in like a good energy versus what can tend to happen, which is when we have personal life stuff that maybe gets in the way of showing up for our business, we can tend to like panic and get really anxious and stressed out about like the business. Like, can the business survive without me for a couple of days? Or like, what's going to happen? Am I going to lose all of my momentum? And that just creates more stress. You're just creating more of like that in, like negative kind of heavy energy. So I just try to focus on like, how can I, like, you know, you only have control over so much. Some things are just upsetting. And the best thing you can do is like, I know these things make me feel better. I'm going to go do these things. And then I'm going to come back with a fresh perspective on, on my business. Because at the end of the day, it's your job, right? You can have a hard time. You have the luxury of being your own boss, of being able to take a step back, which a lot of people don't have. But at the end of the day, it is your job. And you have to learn how to separate the kind of emotional stuff that's happening on your personal life from the business. And that's emotional yeah. intelligence, which is another thing that I very much believe successful CEOs have. Yeah. It, that consistency when the storm is coming is so powerful. It's like those moments when shit's hitting the fan in your personal life, you being consistent with those habits, like you talked about at the beginning of still moving the needle, still showing up, taking care of yourself is so powerful because when you get through that storm, because you still put in the reps every day and went to the, the business gym, you are going to see, like you're gonna reach a whole nother level when you get out of that storm because you took care of yourself while you were in it. I, I just like that, that right there has helped me get through every storm or transition or shift in my life. So I, I just love interviewing you about like, like we talk so fast and we're just like boom, boom, boom. Which, I, which I, I love, I feel like it's just a great, dynamic very easy to go back and forth with because I feel like we have a lot of very similar opinions and just um but yeah yes we go in well um where I know people are watching right now so if you have any questions there's nine people watching drop them in the chat for Belle we'll do a couple cues and then while we wait for their questions to come in Belle where can my audience get connected with you um, when we upload this to our YouTube channel, we'll put the link in the show notes. So any, anything like that where they can go to. Just of course. So I would love to connected. connect with everybody watching. I am an Instagram girl. So you can find me at my, in my Instagram profile. I am at your biz bestie bell. And I have like a bunch of different ways that you can work with me if you're interested in doing that. So just check out my profile. They're all listed there very clearly. And you can always DM me too, but find me on Instagram. It's a lot of fun. I try, I, I think it is at least. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love this fireplace behind you. Like, it's a yes. whole mood. Is this so this is like a lie. No, I live in New York City. So we are not working with a ton of space, but we're working with a big flat screen TV that I can put a YouTube fireplace on. So it, 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 it makes the cozy vibe. But is it morning for you? Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's 8. So we're totally 8 30 12 in the hours morning. Yeah. 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 Yes. Exactly. I love that. I didn't even know that was a fake fire. Like, oh that God. is a move. And it's doing its job. My <laughs> boyfriend said to me before we went on live, he said, do you want me to get the fake fireplace ready? Because he knows my background. <laughs> you, get, you guys are amazing. Well, is there anything that you want to say to my audience before we head off here? I, of course, so appreciate this. I just, I feel like I got a special time with you. It felt amazing to connect, but anything that you want to say to my audience about 2023, about yeah. growing this year, any anything. It doesn't have to be like a mic drop <laughs> moment. Course. But just yeah. Yeah. So first of all, thank you guys so much for watching, whether you watched live or caught the replay. Really appreciate you being here, especially if you're like new to me, you, you tuned into like a random business coach's live. So I appreciate it. You know Bridge, but you don't know me. Um, with that being said, 2023, 
my belief is that this is going to be the year that entrepreneurship takes on like a whole different level in terms of who you're being and the movement that you're creating. So Bridget, I know you're so big on creating movements and building like iconic brands. And I do see that becoming like the full trajectory of the industry because I think that we're at a point where the conversations are getting so good and it's just so much beyond like how to do this, yeah. what to post, right? We're deeper than that in the industry so much <laughs> deeper and it's only going to get to like a new level that I'm excited about because I don't even know what it is. Like I can't even predict what could be, ha what we could be talking about in a couple of, people are talking about like less yeah. from their million dollar month like we're gonna be talking about like my billion dollar year soon so if you want to see yeah. it out in this industry start thinking about your greater why start thinking about the movement that you want to be behind and the, the brand that you want to create it's so much more than selling stuff so if that's the only thing that you kind of are thinking of like oh how can i sell my offer go deeper go bigger um that's the best advice i can give you in 2023 mm -hmm. oh my god God, that was huge. That that piece that you just said about mm -hmm. the conversations are going so much deeper. Yes. No one wants to talk about like, how do I make an Instagram post? It's like, Google that. Google that or better yet, take so much action, you know how to do it. Like, those are not the conversations of people that are doing multi seven figures and beyond. So I just, ah, I love this session with you, Belle. Thanks for coming on. Of course. And, Thank you so yeah, much. Thank so you. fun. Bye, guys. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Belle.